Hello, everyone, and welcome to EGFH Season 1. It is Week 3, and we are here with some Overwatch. Today, we're starting off with a match between the Daniel Hand High School Tigers and the Farmington Pioneers, followed up with a match between... Wait, who's the second match? The Kanor Tech the Panthers. Panthers and the yeah. Ludlow Falcons. Okay. I want to thank our sponsors, the Yukon Gaming Club, the Yukon School of Engineering, and, of course, HyperX for making this season possible. My name is Cool J, and I am joined today by Vic Sharp. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, week three, starting off the maps for this week. We'll start off with the hybrid map in King's Row. We'll move on to the control map of Oasis, and then finally, we'll map three end with Route 66, the escort map. If these teams need to take it to a tiebreaker, then we will go to Watchpoint Gibraltar to finish off this series. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited for these matches today, Cool. Gibraltar is certainly an interesting tiebreaker. I'm hoping we'll get there, but you never know. I do think that Kings Row is a great place to start. Lots of strategy. This is one of the most popular maps in competitive Overwatch. That doesn't even need to be said. It looks like we're getting ready to go into the game. And what are you expecting from these two teams here? I, I think you have to give the edge to the Farmington Pioneers as we're getting into this match. Uh, both these teams are entering at 2-2, two and two, uh, very similar records. But the Tigers just haven't seemed as kind of on point in some of their matches as the Pioneers have. So unless we see some kind of cool strategies, we were talking pre-match about some things we'd like to see these teams run. And I think that's where the Tigers can try and pull a fast one here. Yeah, I definitely think that's where they're going to have a shot to win this is if they can come out with some crazy strategy and catch Farmington off guard. So I hope we can get to see something like that come out. It looks like getting started from the blue team, we're going to be seeing the guy on the widow for this defense and Rogue Titan on the far. That's going to be interesting. They're going to be running Biscuit and Tsunami on the Rhine Hog, and they're going to do a Moira Zen combo with Crypto and Unknown. I think this is pretty interesting coming out from the defense. Yeah, that's an interesting setup. That's some good damage and kind of some good just able to pick off members of the Pioneers if they maybe push a little too much. We'll have to see 30 seconds until the attack officially starts, so we'll have to wait and see what the Pioneers actually decide to go with here to start this map one. It looks like we're seeing Ryan in the choke right now. He's moving around, though. Uh, we're going to see the guy on that high ground looking for the shots. Is that actually a mayor? Are they going to come out with that? No. Will's switching to the Lucio. It looks like they're trying for a dive with the Widow up top. We'll see if Exlia can hit her shots. Yeah, they're going to go for And there we go. A shot right out of the door from Exlia. Beautifully placed, knowing exactly where the guy would be. And this is already a great push for the Pioneers. Yeah, Farmington diving right onto Daniel Hand here. Daniel Hand is reeling. Rogue Titan able to find a kill onto Whale. But other than that, the kill feed filling up with red as Farmington takes a very fast first point cap. That was absurd. It all started with that pick onto the guy, Exliat, hitting his shot, like you said. And now Daniel Hand have to try and regroup and hold around these turns. And Crypto has left. I think we're going to need a pause. Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll get that information for y'all as soon as we can and see if he can't reconnect. But we'll have to kind of, we can just look at that first attack while we're waiting because that was in the blink of an eye, cool. I think, you know, you can look at Exley, it's starting pick onto the guy, but I think the real thing is when they dove in, uh, it looked like it looked like we didn't Daniel Hand didn't really know what to expect. They were kind of uh, they were kind of reeling after that first pick. They were a bit out of position because they were expecting the guy to give them that backup on that widow. And he wasn't there anymore. Yeah, and the fact that he wasn't there, he got to do no damage, as you said. And the tanks then had free reign to just push forward from the pioneers. And yeah, like it's kind of as you mentioned, the Daniel Hand was pushed in a position that they couldn't really defend if it went wrong. 
they had no fallback plan from their positioning. So it's why we've seen a really fast point one and the start that the pioneers probably wanted to see to, to assert their dominance in this map. But we will need just a few minutes, guys. One of the players did just disconnect, so we'll be getting right back in as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, thank you for the patience. Yeah, I think I, it looks like this is going to take a while. We're going to wait for uh, Daniel Hand to get reconnected, and we're going to go to a quick break. All right, Crypto Lord is back in the lobby. It seems like both teams are ready, so we should be able to get going soon here. And what do you think about this push? Do you think that Daniel Hand is going to be able to fight back? Uh, I think it's going to be difficult, but I think there's still plenty of options here. You've got some really good choke, choke points on King's Row. Uh, obviously, these double turns here coming up are one of the biggest spots that Daniel Han can maybe look for the next hold. It looks like Tsunami on the Roadhog and also Titan on that Farah are set up behind Farmington right now. They're coming in for the flank. Rogue almost able to take down that Widow but can't quite find the finishing blow. There we go. Exliat is down. That's the opening that they're looking for, but there goes Seabiscuit. Farmington is getting closed in on from both sides. They lose yet another, but this payload is still rolling. Daniel Hand is going to need to contest the payload if they want to take advantage of this. Yeah, we see Mac get d -Mac. He isn't going to fall, though. Unknown falls first, and it was a good start for Daniel Hand. They got kind of the pickoff, but the guy was just so far behind his team here. Same with Crypto Lord. They're just now really getting into this fight, and they've pretty much already lost with how late the Reaper's getting in here. And the guy doing an interesting mid-fight teleport, that didn't quite work out. Nonetheless, the kill feed's still in favor of Daniel Hand here. Lucio, Whale trying to contest this payload, and here is Doppler looking for more damage, just being a real pest on that tracer in the back line. He's looking to bring Biscuit down low, but he can't quite do it. He can't quite find those picks. He's going to go down. There goes Whale as well, and Farmington really needs to get a disengage here. Yeah, Farmington needs to get out of here. They need to stop kind of walking in one on one. We see the Moira. Oh, it's going to come down. Crypto is actually the first one to fall. And we said Farmington needed to get out. Never mind. It looks like they're just going to try and take the fight. There's the barrage. 
Yeah, Farmington using lots of alts here, but the results don't lie. They pull out the Coalescence, and they're able to find a few kills with that, but the guy turning right around with a 2k on that Death Blossom, and look at that, less than a meter away, and Daniel Hand's going to be able to reset. Yeah, that was such a long, drawn-out fight. It really felt like four or five <laughs> fights in one. We saw so many ult charges come up. Uh, Coalescence was used. Obviously, Crypto didn't quite have that up yet. Um, but we saw the barrage, we saw the whole hog, just so many things used. Rogue actually falls to Doppler. Yeah, great first pick from Doppler there. He was sneaking through that high ground, and he noticed Rogue, and Rogue happened to be low. He hits a couple quick shots there. But the thing is, Farmington needs to engage fast if they want to take advantage of this. Yeah, that spawn timer is so much more in favor of the defense here. And they're looking for the push, though. They might look for this. Doppler gets hooked and doesn't fall, but this might be the entrance that Farmington wants. Or Daniel Hand's going to take it. Oh, the guy in Seabiscuit pushing forward. A big shatter from Biscuit. Look at Farmington. No shield tanks to block that shatter. And Biscuit and the guy able to clean everyone up. Ex Liat, though, on this Widow, is still in their back line. They need to deal with him somehow. Yeah, and he might get found out here. Now he is for sure dropping right on to Unknown. Yeah, and it's hard to get away from his in at uh, melee range. Yeah, he's going to go down there, and Farmington needs to just delay. They're sitting in this streets phase. They haven't been able to get anything going for almost a minute and a half now. They are changing things up. They have Mac on the Reinhardt. Is that going to be enough? You would hope. You mentioned that they didn't have a shield uh, tank. Now they do. They can uh, avoid some of that poke and some of that damage that's now going to try and come out. But it looks like the guy and Tsunami are looking for the flank, and they're going in. On the guy on that flank, as you mentioned, finding ex -Liat. Tsunami with a hook, but he can't finish anyone off. The guy finds Mac as well. An unknown gonna pop that transcendence, keeping this defense alive, and look at them pushing forward, playing well as a team here. And they're gonna find three picks. It looks like Whale sneaking to the back line to get on the payload. I don't think that one's gonna end very well for him. Yeah, but as a Lucio, that's about all he could do in that instance. When the guy jumps on your back line like that, there's not much that Lucio is going to do to counter that. So he's trying to get a little bit of push going. And as you said, now we're approaching almost two minutes of Farmington just being stuck right here. Yeah, and we see now Exley had switched off the Widow onto the Soldier. And I'm just wondering, when is Farming going to run one of these projectile heroes? I think a Junkrat or a Faro would work very well for them right here. Challenge Rogue Titan to really take them down. And Doppler going to find that first pick onto Rogue Titan. The guy caught in the back lines as well. Very low Doppler getting taken down to Tsunami though. The kill feed is in favor of Farming at 10 right now. They're pushing on. And there we go. Crypto Lord goes down to a nice helix from Liat. There goes Unknown as well. The, the Transcendence. Transcendence. Coalescence comes out from Kovac and Farmington gonna win that fight and I think the point. Yeah, that should be enough to nab this second point. I think if Daniel Hand tries to defend this too much, they risk losing a whole lot more. So two minutes, Farmington found a way in another pick on the Rogue Titan. That's what Farmington needs right now. Uh, I think Whale's gonna die for it though. Yeah, Will finally getting punished for his aggression there. And look at this. Biscuit has that shatter ready to go, but so does Mac. Also, the Graviton from Anime Girls. Can Farmington take advantage of these alts? We have the Deadeye for Doppler as well, but the guy going into the back line with another huge Death Blossom takes out three immediately. And that's going to push them right back, and it gives a huge advantage to Daniel Hand in the alt category. They now have three up and ready to go as they won that fight with just one. But Farmington has built up five. All they need is the Coalescence to get to six. Question is, can they use them? And here comes a Shatter from Seabiscuit, but none of his teammates there to back him up. He gets four down, I think, but he can't finish any of them off. He's going to go down, and now comes the Deadeye and the Shatter from Farmington. There's two kills. The grab comes out. So many alts, the transcendence from this side of Daniel Hand. Here comes a sound barrier for Farmington, keeping everyone up, and Unknown goes down. Yeah, that was a great transcendence from Unknown, but really, the issue in that entire fight was how quickly the guy went down. Exliat was in the back just dealing with him, and with only 30 seconds left, Farmington's making the push for the map. 
An unknown gonna try and contest, but he's not going to make it. And with time to spare, Farmington gonna finish this attack. That was an insane third point, Cool. I after the tr trouble, you know, almost two minutes stuck in the same spot in the streets to still finish with time on the clock. That's a very good testament for Farmington moving forward in this series. Yeah, I think they really did a good job of pushing through that adversity. They changed things up. They figured out how to make that push, and they just kept it rolling all the way through that third point, as you mentioned. And now we'll have to see. This is the time for Daniel Hand to answer. It was such a quick start from the Pioneers. If Daniel Hand matches that, but just has a slightly better street, you feel like it could be advantage Daniel Hand. I think the real question is, how will these teams adapt on their defense? How will they see the like little trends and things to expect? It looks like Whale's going to be running a junk. Anime Girl's currently on the Bastion. I'm kind of expecting that to switch, although it could be a good surprise pick here for this first point. Well, and they have the Arisa as well, and they're running out with it, it looks like. It'll be interesting to see where they try to set up for the defense here, but it looks like for the Tigers as well, they're just kind of running the same comp that they were finding success with on defense, just with an Ana. And that could be interesting. I think a Lucio would do them better than the Ana or the Moira. I think running Ana Moira is going to be difficult for them as they're going to lack mobility and defensive alts both the coalescence and the nano boost it looks like we're going to need a pause again from farmington uh but or sorry from daniel hand but as i was saying i think both the nano boost and the coalescence very offensive alts and they have nothing to really deal with uh the attacks coming out from farmington yeah the lord again disconnects that's unfortunate yeah absolutely it just seems like some more uh, computer issues on the side of the Daniel Hand Tigers. We will um, figure out what's happening with that and get back into the game as soon as we can. But yeah, that as you mentioned, the Ana and the Moira definitely seeming like more defensive uh, heroes for sure. And I got a glimpse of where they set up Anime Girls before the pause. If Daniel Hand does not expect this, he is set up right in the entryway uh, by after the wall. If Daniel Hand is not ready for it, that Bastion is going to rip them apart. Yeah, I definitely agree. They were set, I think I saw them setting him up in Hotel. Unless they moved him, I think it's a very smart spot. Because right as Daniel Hand comes past that joke, there is a Bastion right there to shred them to pieces. It looks like Crypto Lord has rejoined. We'll see now if the teams are ready. Daniel Hand is ready to go. Yeah, and we should, like you said, we should be getting right back into this. And that's what I'm going to be having to watch here in this first defense hold pool is does this Bastion do what the Pioneers Five, want four, from it? Uh, three, they have the, two, you know, Orisa shield one. and some of those things Attackers ready income. for him, but Defend can they eight. catch Daniel Hand off guard? Crypto Lord taking a while to select there. He does decide to go with the Moira once again. Whale was set up in the theater over there, but he backed off after getting some opening damage. And it seems they are now noticing that this Bastion is here. They're really trying to figure out how to go around it, and they're all just kind of stuck. They're not really sure what to do. Rogue Titan and Crypto both get taken down thanks to Junkrat spam and Doppler's biotic orb finishing them off. The guy, though... In the back line on this Reaper, can he find a kill? He's going to go on to the point. That's a big mistake. Anime Girls immediately turning around and seeing him. He is so low in this back line, and he's going to go down. So does Unknown. And so far, Farmington in full control on this defense. A great hook from X Lee out there to fix off, finish off Rogue Titan. Yeah, and at the start of that, it looked like the Tigers had the right idea. They were kind of taking a wide berth. They weren't just running in. You kind of got the feeling maybe they knew something like the Bastion could have been there. And it didn't matter. Doppler and just the poke coming out of Whale is too much without true tanks here. Crypto already almost taken down again. And there he goes. It looks like we need yet another pause out from the side of Daniel Hand. This is really unfortunate. Yeah, definitely having a lot of technical issues on their side. Uh, 
I don't know about your screen, Cool. We paused right as the Bastion's firing, and that is a wonderful sound. <laughs> yeah, I can hear it just a bit, although I think I'm far enough away that it's not a huge deal. It looks like they have decided to put in a sub for Daniel Hand. Who is Mathers? We will get that figured out. We'll see what we're doing with the pause. But guys, again, sorry for all of the technical issues, but we are going to take a brief break while we try and figure out this monitor and tech issues. And we'll be right back getting into map one of our first game of the day. Well, we are back. Anime Girls on that Bastion is still firing away, and it looks like both teams are once again ready to go. Farmington, if you forgot, is totally dominating on this defense so far, and possibly the cause is Daniel Hand having lots of technical issues so far. Yeah, I can't take too much away from the Pioneers, though, even with technical issues. They just have the game plan, and that was a beautiful rip tower from Whale. In great positioning as well to rocket jump over to that top right high ground. So many people don't use this spot, but he goes up there and gets that beautiful 2k on that tire. Yeah, and uh, I think, I don't really think actually at wanted to find him, but he found the guy off to the side, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and... You know, Hog is tanky, but not against a Reaper. And it looks like Daniel Hand now running Rogue on the Genji. Maybe that is the switch they were looking for, Ooh. but he sees the trap, but he gets caught in it anyway. That's unfortunate. The magnetism. I have fallen prey to that so many times. Ex Liat flanking them on this Rodog. He gets slept. Can he escape? I think he will, thanks to taking a breather right there, getting some health back. But he's still going very low. The guy wants to find this kill. Unknown solo. He takes him out. Anime Girls, meanwhile, getting a 2k. There goes Tsunami and Seabiscuit. Somehow, Daniel Han made it to the point in that fight, but. Not much more than that. Only a little bit more than a minute left. Can they do anything to get through this tough defense from Farmington? Yeah, they're struggling to even take the hog out outnumbered. We're seeing maybe some un uh, disagreement because Unknown was on the point kind of by himself at one point, and that's not really, really where you want to be as an Ana. So they're going to have to do interesting. Switching it up, Biscuit is now on the Mercy, and they're going for a Pharmacy with only 50 seconds to go. Uh, we've also seen Unknown switching onto the Orisa. I think this is a very interesting change, trying to combat Max Orisa with an Orisa of their own. Is it going to be enough? And look at this yet again, Farmington finding so many kills, but Rogue Titan finishes off Kovac. Can they find any more? And not looking like it, the Bastion is just so well protected. Here's going to be a Rip Tower. Who's he going to look for? He's going to look up to kill the Pharmacy. Can he get there in time? Just running around, but with 20 seconds remaining, it's going to be so hard, and the guy falls again. 
and Tsunami able to find a kill and taking down that Supercharger as well. Still out of mech though, he needs to figure out how to build it back up in time. Only 5 seconds left, is Daniel Han going to be able to contest this point? That does not look like it, and indeed, it will be a full hold from the Pioneers. That was such an outstanding defense. It caught us off guard a little bit with, like, the Bastion, but it worked so well. And here we're going to see a play of the game from Seabiscuit's Reinhardt. And look at this play. Look at how well they set up. He lines it up. He times it perfectly. The charge and the swinging, of course. A five-man Earth Shatter right there, and the Widow just sitting in the back line. Yeah, we'll and <laughs> one of the big things I have to mention from that defense that I don't think we talked about a lot was Doppler's Moira was doing absurd amount of poke with that biotic uh, orb. And just combine that with Whale's Junkrat meant every time Daniel Han tried to fight there, they were at half health or below. And I think something about Moira that like a lot of people don't realize is you pretty much have to play a D.Va against a Moira or else her Biotic Orb is just going to have so much damage. You're going to come into a fight with three people at half health. It's so hard to avoid it. So you need the D.Va there to eat it up. And it seemed, I don't remember Daniel Han playing D.Va at all until like the very end of that attack. Yeah, it was an adaptation that needed to come through and it just seemed to come through maybe a little too late they tried really late into the attack to switch it up but just too little too late but we will be getting onto oasis the control map for our second map it is farmington up one zero after a fairly kind of dominant i guess we can say map one on king tro Yeah, but the thing is, we did see Daniel Hand put up a good fight on the defense. So I think their win condition here, they need to be able to get in and get that first point cap. I'm going to be expecting to see Rogue Titan on the Fara because he like it seemed like it was a comfort pick for him on that King's Row. And I think it's a very strong pick on this Oasis map. Yeah, absolutely. And the fact that it is Rogue Titans, one of his most played heroes, you have to feel that comfort level could be so important. And yeah, I, I think if Farmington gets the first point here or gets the first cap, it's going to be very difficult what? because we saw their defense also prove very stellar uh, once they could set up and they had the, the ability to execute their game plan. All right, so it looks like we will be getting into this map. We're going to be on... This is University, I believe? I believe so. So we're going to be on University first. Obviously, this high ground on the right is important, but it seems like most teams here, in my experience, will run an Arisa, run an Arisa Hog or run a Dive, and they're always going to base around this left room with the mini health pack. It looks like... Both teams coming out with a road dog. Biscuit on the Rhine, though, versus Anime Girls on the Zarya. I'm interested to see how the Hog Zarya comp works out for them. And Titan not on the Pharah as we expected. Nope. On the McCree that he played for most of the defense, if I remember correctly. Uh, but I, it's actually very interesting. Very similar comps. Roadhog, uh, McCree, and Moira on both sides. Just kind of differing in their off tank and kind of their second support choices. I think I'm interested to see what kind of impact the guy has on that Reaper. It seemed like he was doing most of the work for Daniel Hand on the first map. And here on Oasis, things can get a bit more hectic. He might have a bit more room to operate. And we'll see if maybe he can help his team push forward to a win. I really do think the guy could be the X factor here. Can he put in a lot of work on this Reaper compared to Exliat's Widow? Uh, the sight lines for the Widow in this map can be a little rough if he doesn't get a chance to set up. And a hook already comes through, but not able to pull him through. That could have been devastating. And Crypto falls immediately. Yeah, Whale with a nice environmental kill. And Daniel Hand with a good retreat here, trying to push backward, but not quite going back far enough and they're gonna get taken out three kills make it four in quick succession there for farmington yeah and that was an issue they were once again split up the guy was in the back line trying to deal with i believe kovac 
uh, and maybe even anime girls, and it just wasn't able to. And Crypto Lord, once again, it seems like it's happened so many fights already. He's the first one down. And yet, you just, again, have to wonder if those technical difficulties are having an issue. But look at this! Whale well, way in the back line on this Roadhog! Can Daniel Han focus him down quickly enough, or will he get away? He's taking so much damage, but with that take a breather and grabbing a health pack, he's able to survive and get away. Yeah, and I do actually like this adaptation from uh, Daniel Han. They switch to the Winston, and they're just having him jump one point. Matt falls as well. Rogue Titan is now onto the Genji, and they've actually made a small push onto the point. And look at that, they're taking down Ex Liet, but look at this Kovac on the Moira with a 2k in the back line. They're able to take down Anime Girls as well, but I don't think it's going to be enough for them to win this point. No, they're still trying. The Rogue is now going on to Kovac, as we can see. You see Biscuit not really going to survive down there with two members like that. And it was a good attempt from Daniel Hand. It was, they showed life, but they're going to have to make a little, a couple more adaptations, it looks like. And Whale, a nice hook onto Rogue Titan to get a very early pick. And Daniel Hand, if they're smart, they're not even going to try and push in here. But it looks like they're going to try anyway. Unknown going down. Actually, on the Sombra now, a very interesting pick coming out. Tsunami going to get a revenge kill onto Whale. But again, not enough as Farmington able to find most of the picks. Doppler getting a bit caught out. We'll see. Can Daniel Hand push forward with this advantage? Yeah, but with only 10% left, all Farmington has to do is hold here. We do see alt economy fairly even, and Tsunami's just going to use it. They know they have to go in for this and just try. Overtime is ticking away. What can Daniel Hand do? And here comes a Dragon Blade from Rogue Titan. Can he find anything? Kovac is going to go down, but he gets taken down by Max Ana. Mac also has that Nano Boost ready to go for a retake if they want. And the Deadeye from Doppler finds two. A whole hog from Whale putting out so much damage takes down Tsunami, and we are now in overtime as Farmington has recapped the point. Yeah, and I was going to mention here how Farmington got off the point. They allowed Daniel Hand to cap, but it didn't matter. The fight went so cleanly in Farmington's favor. Now it's just Daniel Hand throwing themselves, not able to get on point, and the first point will go to the Pioneers. Score. That was a well-fought point. I feel like Daniel Hand had more of an opportunity than it would have seemed by the end score. I think they just couldn't really coordinate their attacks well enough. It seemed like they were always, you know, getting an advantage and then a couple people would die in the back line. And then the fight was just lost. Yeah, and it seemed like more fights than we could really count. Crypto got picked off or they had a trailing kill that lasted into the next fight and Five, it just meant that they were down three, a two, member at nearly all points round two. Capture. and Get here we go Exliant on the hanzo and also farmington running a triple dps comp here with a zarya as their solo tank rogue titan on the genji and the guy on the junkrat i think they're uniquely positioned to take advantage of this comp Whale in the back line on the Tracer. He is looking for kills. He's finding damage onto Seabiscuit. Can he do much else? Meanwhile, Doppler finding the first kill onto the guy. No more Junkrat spam to worry about. For Oh, and Doppler with a great stun and kill onto Rogue Titan. He is on this high ground. And they have the picks, but Farmington, for some reason, not able to contest this point just yet. There we go. Tsunami going down. Crypto going down. They are contesting big time. And there we go. Farmington. Going to be able to win this? Unknown going down, and there we go. They're going to start capping the point. Yeah, this is a very aggressive uh, starting composition coming out from Farmington. Like you mentioned, the three DPS and really just Zarya as your tank means they know that Daniel Han just wants to keep fighting at this point, and they're willing to take that fight to them. And it worked out fairly well. Daniel Han was on the point, but not in the position to actually get the cap. And we're going to see for Farmington, Doppler and Mac setting up on this high ground here. Doppler's able to protect Mac from any kind of dive attempts. And it looks like that's what Daniel Hand is going to try and set up for as they move around to this right side. Tsunami able to find an early pick onto Exlia, but he wasn't having much of an impact so far anyway. A nice dead eye kill from Doppler onto the guy, but he's out of position. He's going to go down. Tsunami taking so much damage, but he's going to be able to survive it for now. The Tracer in that backline whale looking for some kills. Can he find them? 
<laughs> yeah, and Rogue is trying to go crazy in the back line, is almost taken down, but survives in the skin of his teeth, and they're trying to get on to point. They take out the Doomfist, and it looks like this should be a cap sooner or later from Daniel Hand if they can get this down as two more fall from Farmington, and that should be point over to Daniel Hand. And I really wish we could take a look at that again. That push from Daniel Hand to retake that point, so much damage coming in from the guy in that Junkrat, and Seabus getting Tsunami really playing well as a team pushing forward together. And I think that's really what I was talking about, is they were able to coordinate an attack and get everybody on the same page, and they are able to win that point. A lot of changes from Farmington, though. We now see Whale on Roadhog, Exliat on Doomfist, and now it's pretty much just Doppler on that McCree, but Unknown taken out very quickly. And once again, Daniel Hander down a member in, before a possible fight. And Exliat on this Doomfist doing so much damage. It's crazy, look at that, taking down Seabiscuit, and I, you know, I was suspect when the switch came out, but he's proven that he can play this hero really well. Yeah, it's a nice little play. I was a little worried about where the damage would come from if Doppler fell, but actually I'm saying, what what damage? I'm doing this. So, it's Daniel, a big cap. Definitely. Daniel Ham, though, building up 40%, and they're already coming in for another attack. Will they be able to get a retake this time? They have five ults. They need to try and go for something here. It definitely looks like they're looking for it. Max the first to fall. Rogue Titan with the Dragon Blade now. He's looking for kills, but Kovac takes him out with a Coalescence. Whale finds a kill on the Tsunami, and look at this. Farmington again fighting back. There goes the guy, and the timer is ticking up. I think that's going to be it. We are in overtime. Yeah, and we're trying to see the last few people. Crypto trying to stay on point. Same with Unknown. They're just trying to buy time. And now Daniel has actually gotten members here, but they're so low health. Seabiscuit's going to fall. Overtime's ticking down, and they're just coming into the field right now, one after another. Victory. And Farmington going to get the win on Oasis. And I believe that is a win in the series as well, the 2-0 map score. of the game. Right? Yes, that was a 2-0. Farmington, we did talk about some that we expected a good result from Farmington here, and we see the Whale getting his uh, environmental kill and then just running down Rogue Titan. This is when he got really far into the back line, but we did talk about a lot that we thought Pioneers had the potential to really show up in this series. And after, a, I think, a bit of a an interesting offense and a shaky offense, to be honest, they really solidified it and came back hard. And yeah, I did like that. We saw Daniel Hand able to fight back on that second section of Oasis. And I really feel like they could have had it, but they just couldn't quite get everything to line up the way they wanted in Farmington with a well-deserved win there. 2-0 on Oasis and Kings Row. Yeah, that was a great map. It That might help build some confidence to Pioneers. Because um, we talked about these two teams were both tied in the standings at 2-2. Two and two, And so for them to get a win like this, that would be really massive. That could be really massive uh, moving forward. Yeah, that would be massive. And so I really want to thank everybody for turning in, tuning in, sorry, to the first match with Farmington, as we mentioned, taking the victory over Daniel Hand. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will have our next match, which is, of course, Caner Tech Panthers versus the Ludlow Falcons. And before we head out, I'd like to thank our sponsors, the Yukon Gaming Club, the Yukon School of Engineering, and HyperX for making this season possible.